The community of practice is, um, has been a long evolution of uh, the, the notion that people could come together and collaborate uh, at a re really deep level and as a result of that collaboration uh, create new knowledge and adapt practice in ways that, that if you're working in the early childhood field, for example, uh, results in better outcomes for kids. Okay. Uh, communities of practice is, is a term that I find really useful. I've been doing this work since 1995, and there are a couple of reasons why I find it useful. Number one, um, Etienne Wenger, well, he's one of the uh, theorists that has developed this idea, but uh, what I find useful is the way he frames it into three components, one of which is a domain that people share and uh, they usually have a real passion to do work in that particular area or topic. Um, a sense of community that creates a space for them to collaborate effectively with each other. And the third element is the idea that um, you can do this in a way that adapts what you do uh, as a professional. And adapting it meaning changing it, making it better, so that you get better results. And I think when you pull those three elements together, you get a real sense of energy that brings people to the work and keeps them there for the long term. Now, my um, experience has been really in trying to create that within a job embedded setting, in a face-to-face -face context. Mm -hmm. But what I find useful about his idea of online work is that that can actually expand the work and sustain it uh, and make it actually easier once you get the technology down. All of the organizations that you mentioned, I think, have a, a dimension of, of professional learning, professional development, if you will. All of them do that. Right. And so, I think that the contribution that communities of practice can make to that is that every time that you have a, a professional development episode, you have the, the potential to invite people to work as a community of practice. And that that work can happen clearly in the workplace, but it also can happen um, virtually. And what that does is it expands the possibilities of ideas because if you do it virtually you could bring people into that community that have specific expertise around that domain and really I think ha expand the possibilities for creating new knowledge, new ways of, of being successful in whatever it is that you do. Let's talk a little bit about the similarities again yeah. which they both share. Okay, The similarities are those three elements that I mentioned before. They share a domain. People have a passion to work in there. Uh, they are committed to working as a community, which means they have high risk regard for each other. They respect each other. They trust each other. Right. And they're willing to uh, make themselves vulnerable in that context so that everyone can learn, right? So those elements, I think, uh, are true in both settings, in a face-to-face, in -face, uh, job-embedded setting, for example, and in an online um, setting. Now, what happens, I think, when you go to the online setting with the, uh, with the uh, increasing use of technology is that usually communities of practice run into some tech glitches at the beginning, right? And just like actually, um, if you use a, a protocol to structure a conversation, the use of that protocol is almost like another kind of technology. So even in a face-to-face -face context, at the beginning, you, you, there are glitches in facilitating the steps of that protocol. Uh, after you get over that, the, the protocol fades into the background and really becomes a tool for the conversation. I think the same thing happens with the technology. At the beginning, there are glitches. Uh, people don't know how to log in. They don't know how to upload, uh, upload a document. And there are lots of tools today that, that are making that easier and easier. But I think what happens uh, in a virtual context is the same thing that happens in a face-to-face -face context, that over time, the technology, the tools that you're using to have the conversation, as you become more familiar with them, they fade into the background, as they should. 
And what happens is the real focus, it becomes on the conversation around learning, around sharing practice, around supporting each other, uh, around the dilemmas that we're experiencing. So I think the difference, I think, is that it takes a little bit longer to get it going in an online uh, or virtual context. But I think if the people have the right passions, if they have the right motivations, if they get it, that they can make that work as, I think, as seamlessly as, as the face-to-face -face process. Mm -hmm.